Well, welcome to um, the 2017 Action Plan for Fighting High Funds public hearing. This is the second public hearing we've had uh, here in 2017 here at the Western Library. Thank you for coming tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk a little bit about why we're meeting um, and then we'll get into some more specifics about strategically what we are trying to implement across the community in the upcoming year. Um, Again, as you can see, this is an opportunity to provide community input to um, our draft program year action plan. And we had, the, the first meeting that we had um, gave kind of a broad and generalized outline of, of what the plan would entail. Tonight we are presenting um, uh, a, an actual budget uh, it's not specifically a budget, but we'll be kind of breaking down the investment dollars um, with a few caveats um, for the upcoming year. So that it's an amount of detail that we did not include um, in our previous meeting. So uh, we'll be talking about um, uh, the HUD entitlement grant funds. HUD is the Housing and, and Urban Development um, Department of the United States government. Um, we get CDBG, Home, Emergency Solutions Grants, and Housing uh, for Opportunities for Persons with AIDS or HOPL grants. And we'll talk a little bit more specifically about each of those designations in just a bit. So comments can be made tonight following the presentation or they can be made um, via mail or email through May the 12th and we'll provide some contact information in just a second for that. Pardon me. And it's important to, to, to note that as of yet, um, we have not um, received uh, the allocation for uh, the program year that we're going to be discussing. So, frankly, we are just um, assuming that the funding that we received in the last program year is going to be pretty much static or, or commiserate this year, so the numbers that we'll be talking about will be uh, based on that assumption. The, so, based on that assumption, we assume that the funding uh, will be somewhere in the neighborhood of $14,236,923. And the final version of this action plan will be due to HUD 45 days after they um, make the official funding announcement and tell all of the participating jurisdictions across the country what their actual funding amounts will be. <clears throat> Additionally, um, all, all, of, all of the budgets uh, for um, Metro Louisville must be approved by Metro Council as well. So in fact, the mayor will be presenting a budgetary um, address to the Metro Council this week um, on April 27th and that budget will be approved at the end of this fiscal year for that permanent uh, fiscal year. We've uh, invited a guest tonight and um, from the Louisville Metro Housing Authority and we, we've we invited this guest um, to come and talk a little bit about the commitment first of all about the upcoming um, Choice uh, Neighborhoods um, grant and um, in five to ten year plan for the Russell neighborhood, and also about the commitment that Louisville Metro has made in the form of CDBG dollars to this um, very exciting project. It's a significant investment and will have implications on additional programmatic activities over the course of the next five years. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So. I'd like to invite Sarah Galloway, who is here with us again from the, uh, from the Louisville Metro Housing Authority, and to speak about choice neighborhoods and the grant and the revitalization efforts for the future terrace housing development. And Sarah is the Moving to Work Program Coordinator. So, um, do you want to um, you want to come up and stand next to me, or pull up a chair, or you can have this chair, and I'll go out there. However you want to do it, Sarah. Whatever you want. Super, super informed. Super, 
and I should have put that up here before you came. I apologize. <laughs> In early 2015, the Louisville Metro Housing Authority was awarded a $425,000 grant uh, from HUD to develop a revitalization plan for the Russell neighborhood and for the Beecher Terrace housing complex. We spent two years working with more than 600 neighborhood stakeholders to put together a comprehensive plan for the neighborhood. That was finalized and submitted to HUD in January 2017. Uh, then in June of 2016, we found out we were awarded a second Choice Neighborhoods grant, a $1 million action grant um, to do some initial uh, highly visible activities to sort of jumpstart the revitalization of the Russell neighborhood. Um, we're using those funds to make improvements at Shepherd Park, um, particularly a uh, spray ground for children uh, and a new playground. Um, to redevelop several vacant lots in the neighborhood that are owned by the city, um, to create gateways into the neighborhood. Um, these will be large-scale murals on several of the railroad overpasses that are located between 13th and 15th streets, and to make what we're calling smart bus stops, which are artistic and um, digitally enhanced uh, bus stops within the neighborhood. Um, we were lucky enough in December 2016 to be notified by HUD that we had received a $29,575,000 Choice Neighborhoods Implementation Grant. Uh, this grant will essentially give us the seed money to um, completely revitalize the Beecher Terrace housing development, uh, which currently contains 758 units. Following revitalization, the new site will contain approximately 640 mixed income units including 20 affordable homeownership or 20 homeownership units. Um, the CDBG money is absolutely critical to this project in that it will um, pay for the public infrastructure needed at the new site. So new roadways, new water lines, everything that essentially goes underneath the site. Okay. And, and just to... to um uh, just to, to summarize again the investment that Metro, the commitment that Louisville Metro has made to this effort, um, a total of $15 million of community development block grants have been committed to the project over the course of five or six years. And for the upcoming year, that initial investment will um, equal $2.5 million, which will be used for infrastructure developments for um, early phases of development. Mm -hmm. And especially critical for the first phase of development, which is a 120 unit senior building um, located on what's currently Old Walnut Park. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it, Sarah. And if we have any questions later on, we can um, address those. So, um, Again, we, we covered, in broad strokes, we covered very similar material in the first meeting um, that we had about a month and a half or so ago. Uh, but I did, and so if you, were, um, if you were here for that presentation, a lot of this stuff will look uh, fairly familiar, but it's important information to cover once again. So um, the action plan covers our CDBG dollars, as we talked about community development block grants. Um, those are funds that are used to, pro to provide um, decent housing, a suitable living environment, and expanded economic opportunities for low and moderate uh, income persons and households. Home or home investment partnerships are funds that are used for acquiring, developing, and or rehabilitating affordable housing or, provide, or for, for providing direct rental assistance. ESG or emergency solutions grants are funds that are used to reach out to those living on the street um, to uh, support emergency shelters, rapidly rehouse homeless individuals and families, and to prevent homelessness. And then HAPA, or Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS, are funds that are used to provide housing assistance and related supportive services to low-income persons living with HIV, AIDS, and their families. Again, we mentioned um, uh, previously uh, in the beginning, but it's important to note that um, the funding levels that we'll be talking about um, uh, will be in the neighborhood of 14.2, 14.3 million dollars total. Um, these funds are allocated by formula 
Um, um, HUD uses a formula to determine um, the, the amount of funding that each uh, city or participating jurisdiction gets based on population and other factors. And in order to receive that grant, there are three important things that each recipient has to do. You have to present a five-year consolidated plan. So uh, we most recently submitted our consolidated plan in 2015, which stood for five years. And that five-year plan outlines goals, objectives, and, and actual numbers that the city agrees to achieve over the course of five years. So that's kind of a broader, longer-range strategic plan um, for community investment over the course of five years. And then each year, you have to submit an annual action plan, which is what we're here talking about tonight. And then, so that's kind of at the beginning, you submit the action plan to, to, to delineate, in theory, what is one-fifth of the consolidated plan. And then at the end of that year, you submit a caper or a report that denotes the outcomes and reports on what you were able to achieve, and hopefully that matches up with what you said you were going to achieve. You can download um, uh, any of those documents on our website, and that's a really long website address, but if you, if you go to louisvilleky.gov um, backslash government, housing, community development, we've got um, a public notices and federal plans and project compliance section that has all of those documents um, available. This is a, 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 I feel, or I find this to be a pretty useful um, info infographic here to kind of talk a little bit about the flow that I just laid out and about what Metro government sends to HUD and what HUD then sends back to us. So again, the consolidated plan, um, gets sent to them, they approve it, they tell us what our allocation is going to be, we send it in, uh, the action plan back to them, they approve the funding, and then we give them a report to, um, to, to denote what we were able to um, achieve. Funding priorities. So, obviously we try to match up um, the objectives for um, uh, the, the larger strategic plan uh, for the city um, and with the consolidated plan goals and obviously action plan activities as well. So we want to deliver excellent city services, we want to ensure fiscal integrity, um, support job creation and, and most importantly invest in our people and in neighborhoods. And um, goal number 12 of the mayor's strategic plan is around increasing and preserving affordable housing um, choices throughout Louisville Metro. Um, obviously, we also want to um, positively impact Goal 15, which is to increase inclusion and create equity, and Goal 16, which is to decrease abandoned structures. And we'll talk a little bit more specifically in a bit about the actions that we invest in that address those particular issues. In the, in the consolidated plan, we identified um, five major goals for our investments. Affordable housing, community development, homeless services, small business development, and non-homeless special needs. And uh, just, just to do a quick recap, and I won't spend a whole bunch of time on this, but from program year 2015, um, it, which was uh, July 1, 2015 to June 30, 2016, these are some of the outcomes. And I'm not going to read each one of these. You, you can see them on the screen. I'll, I'll hit a couple of highlights. Um, but data from the current program year will be available approximately in September. <clears throat> Pardon me, this year. Um, so 32 households received down payment assistance. Um, that, that was across uh, 13 different zip codes. So down payment assistance is available for families, for income eligible families in any uh, uh, area of the city that's not geographic specific uh, and we get a, a good spread of that um, we've got uh, I want to talk a little bit also about um, we, we had our Choto activity and <clears throat> pardon me 240 households were provided with home repairs and 
rehabs through emergency repair, weatherization, etc. Uh, we brought some, are the brochures up yeah, front? Yeah, back in the table. We have some brochures up front that detail, oh great, we have one, that detail the home repairs uh, and rehab programs that we offer through um, our office as well. And we, uh, more than 2,800 persons receive home, home ownership education and counseling services. And then there were several rental construction and rehab projects um, that were invested in or that, and, and that are underway right now. Um, and those include um, Nightingale, um, Louisville Historic Rising, Jacob School, Watterson Lakeview, and uh, Riverport Landing. Uh, we're going to continue on with a couple more slides of highlights. I'm not going to, again, tick off each one. You can see um, the summation posted up here on the slide. But I did want to hit on a couple of, um, of high points or just a little more specificity because these are just kind of general numbers. Um, the community centers uh, or, and parks um, that we have listed up here, I think we have five parks. Those are uh, Riverside Gardens, Wyandotte Park, Shelby Park, uh, Houston Quinn Park, and the West Louisville Outdoor Learning Center. And those improvements can go anywhere from benches and a walking path to a splash park to a bathroom um, or to a set of bathrooms. You know, a lot of these parks don't have bathrooms at all. So um, in, in eligible um, census tracts, those are the sort of investments that we can make at, um, at our community parks. Some renovations at some nonprofit and um, uh, community facility type uh, buildings, including the Portland Museum, Louisville Central Community Center, and the Urban League. And then we've got um, technical assistance that um, is available for um, economic development activities, so business related TA. Uh, nearly 30 businesses receive micro enterprise loans. You know, those loans typically range anywhere from $2,500 to $15,000. Um, and those are spread across 14 total zip codes as well. So we get a good geographic uh, disbursement for, for that activity as well. And um, finally, um, the, the last slide that we have that is, is giving a little bit more detail about our activities um, from program year 2015 include nearly 50 homes that received um, uh, tenant-based rental assistance, uh, more than 10,000 homeless persons received um, supportive services, um, a dozen nonprofits served more than 6,000 clients um, that utilized emergency uh, uh, ESG assistance for street outreach, uh, prevention, etc. And then the Family Economic Success Program um, provided more than 1,700 folks with um, economic empowerment skills uh, to move towards self-sufficiency. And uh, and then in our special needs um, and HAPA goals, goals, we had tenant-based tenant rental assistance for more than 30 households um, through um, our housing opportunities for persons with AIDS work. 160 households got um, STRME. What is what is that? Uh, Short-term rent, mortgage, and utility assistance. Gosh, thank you so much, Curtis. We have so <laughs> many. Uh, it's, it's like alphabet soup. We have so many um, acronyms. I, I get confused sometimes. And then um, over 1,600 folks received supportive services um, through our HOPO activity as well. And uh, the, the last number, 75 households received rent construction or barrier removal services um, are great for 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 persons with disabilities and for aging seniors, um, the ability to remain in the home that they live in by allow it by by installing um, ramps so they can get access to their home, or by addressing some barriers within the home, such as stairs or handrails, um, you know, allows folks to to age in place. And very important across our community. Um, as you look at the next slide, we talked um, a little bit earlier about the, the goals that we have, and we, we denoted five, but we break down kind of our spending um, to, to include our admin and planning, and it's uh, important to note that, now I have a little bit of problem with these colors, so forgive me, but 
obviously we we spend the majority of our funds um, on housing followed by community development homeless services um, and then special needs services and small business development by percentage and of course our admin and planning um, allocation as well <clears throat> excuse me so we spoke a little bit earlier about um, the, the commitment that we've made to choice neighborhoods and one of one of the ways that we complement and try to undergird and support those efforts is by targeting additional resources in the Russell neighborhood in what's called a neighborhood revitalization strategy area and that that denotion is a five uh, or, or a designation is a five-year designation and the most recently approved, submitted and approved designation was for the Russell neighborhood um, uh, mid-2016. And so what it allows is just a little bit of flexibility of, of the application of CD, CDBG funding in, in that particular neighborhood. Um, and again, is, is, is complementing the Choice Neighborhood's efforts. I think on the next slide, we've got, um, so we proposed um, to, to invest about a million dollars um, in, in, in Russell. Um, and again, all of these, and again, these numbers are um, uh, preliminary numbers, and these are our budget numbers, but these are all contingent upon Metro Council approving uh, our budget as well as us receiving our allocation from HUD. So these are our our best estimation of what those commitments are going to look like, and um, I'm sorry if you could just if, if you could just go back to thanks so much, Curtis. I appreciate that. So just to get an idea of what sort of activities will be funded through this investment, uh, we'll have um, we'll have home home repair assistant uh, assistance um, available to folks that own homes in this neighborhood. But we'll also have incentives to attract new home ownership in this neighborhood, um, to, to attract businesses in this neighborhood, to help res Russell residents start small businesses, and um, to address vacant abandoned properties as well. And we'll take a systemized approach um, across these sectors because, again, um, this, this designation lasts for five years. Our commitment to Russell last for five years so we won't be able to, to bite off all of this work in one year we'll take a measured um, kind of systematic approach across the neighborhood in subsequent years <clears throat> thank you Chris um, so the, the next uh, important chunk of, of investment to talk about is, are the affordable housing activities which which represent uh, north of five and a half million dollars um, of work and, and make in large part that uh, um, housing um, uh, piece of pie on the pie chart that we shared earlier. We'll have efforts to promote and sustain home, home ownership, so that'll be um, certainly uh, including the repair um, and rehab efforts and programs that we have. Um, uh, we'll construct and rehab affordable units, home ownership counseling. And then again, the specific um, Russell NRSA activities that we talked about as well. Community development activities. Um, again, we uh, this will be just uh, shy of $3 million. And we talked about the, the big chunk of that is going to be for supporting uh, the infrastructure improvements in Russell. Um, so the vast majority of, of Th those dollars will go to that effort. Uh, next slide, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, and, and I failed to mention earlier, um, but the homeless services um, activities um, are administered through a sister agency, Community Services, which are part of Louisville Metro government. Um, historically, Community Services and Housing have, were actually in the same um, department a couple of years ago as Louisville Ford was formed there was a split between community services and the Office of Housing and Community Development so um, 
we are the we are the arbiters of this plan and of, of this application to HUD, but the, our partner agency um, supervises these activities and um, and we work closely with them to work on these initiatives, which include rapid rehousing, rental assistance, and we kind of talked about this earlier, homeless prevention services, street outreach, and then shelter operations and case management. So we partner with about a dozen agencies to get that work done as well. And the proposed funding for that's uh, right at two and uh, uh, three quarter million dollars. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our small business development activities are just north of um, a half a million dollars um, and this again will assist businesses through micro, uh, we call it micro biz, um, technical assistance, loans, and then loans for businesses um, in West Louisville, particularly where you're marking um, um, $300,000 for Russell NRSA activities. For that spe specific um, work, um, the two hundred thousand dollars there uh, will be through Metco. We'll be focusing um, on bringing businesses to the neighborhood that meet public demands, such as restaurants, fitness centers, and entertainment facilities. Again, it's important to note that when we are making these investments, particularly in the NRSA, we're referring to the Vision Russell document. We are trying to, to provide some actual funding dollars that align with initiatives that have been um, identified in that document rather than just um, recreate the will as it were. <coughs> Pardon me. And then finally, um, our non-homeless um, Special needs activities are proposed uh, just shy of three quarters of a million dollars. Again, this is will include um, the ramp uh, and um, uh, barrier removal um, in, uh, initiative for persons with disabilities. This will also provide assistance for um, persons with HIV and AIDS and their families to hop activity uh, in the form of TPRA, short term rent, mortgage, utility assistance and supportive services. Excuse me. So I know that that's kind of um, uh, a lot of information, but just as a recap from a, a timeline perspective, as I mentioned, we had our first public hearing at, at the end of February. Um, we released a draft of this plan um, earlier this month. Um, and we're in, in the midst of a 30-day public comment period. We're having uh, the second public hearing tonight and then um, the public comment period will end on May 12th. Um, typically, we, um, we submit our action plan in May um, after we receive our allocation um, from, from HUD. That may be delayed this year. Um, it may be June, July, August. We have 45 days after they actually give us our allocation, but we can't do it until that's received. Pardon. Again, um, all of these plans are available on our website, and we also have hard copies at at our offices, so our offices are at the Metro Development Center, which is located at 444 South Fifth Street. Um, on the fifth floor, we have um, a hard copy available up there in the lobby. We have a hard co copy at the community services offices, which is located at the Edison Center, 701 West Ormsby on the second floor there. You can take the elevator up to the second floor. And then we also have hard copies available. Are they at all of the, the yes. library branches? Yes. So tonight we're here at the Western um, Library. How many total branches? 18. 18, fantastic. Um, and it, uh, also they're available at neighborhood place sites. Um, let's see here. Again, this is, this is the contact information that we talked about earlier. So you can provide written comment um, to our division, attention of Curtis Stauffer, um, who is the assistant director for the Office of Housing and Community Development and is joining me. Uh, here tonight. I hope that I introduced myself. If I didn't, my name is Gabe. I'm the director of the Office of Housing and Community Development. 
Um, you met uh, Sarah Galloway from the Housing Authority earlier, and again, Curtis is with us tonight. He's our assistant director. You can send written comments to him. You can send uh, uh, comments via email to him at curtis.stoffer at louisvilleky.gov. Um, and then finally, you can also make comment tonight here. So uh, any attendees who signed up uh, on the speaker list uh, will be invited to make their comments. Um, and if anyone wishes to speak um, but didn't sign up, please go sign up now. And um, now if anybody did sign up to speak, I would welcome them to participate at this point. Everybody sign up? Okay. Kevin, um, Randy, comments? Anybody any questions? <coughs> well, I, have, I do have a question, okay. and I will be sending written comments. Excellent. So my question is, so uh, you typically don't send in the action plan until you get notification of the allocation. Right. And it's probably going to be delayed. So it's probably not going to happen timely like you normally does. So in the event that you get notification of the allocation and it's less, much less than you had anticipated, will you go back and redo your action plan? Um, we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to redo the budget numbers. You know, strategically what we're focusing on won't really change. But what we'll have to do is, is to adjust accordingly. Which is what, which is frankly what has to happen every year anyway. We may be doing that after the, after the mayor presents the budget to Metro Council. There may be some shifting there, but yeah, absolutely. We would have to do, we wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily redo the plan. Um, you know, I think we would have a very similar focus, but we would absolutely have to take a look at the budget. So will there be another opportunity for public input doing that adjustment change? You follow what I'm saying? I do. Or, um, uh, per uh, HUD's, uh, Notice uh, that allowed an exemption from their current action plan timelines this year, given the issues with Congress's failure to pass a budget in a timely fashion for the current year. Uh, they are not mandating additional public comment periods. What they did mandate, which you'll see, I can't remember the page number, but in the draft plans, it talks about contingencies for changes in funding. Uh, and basically, uh, for the most part, should funding be reduced, um, there'll be certain costs that are relatively fixed. Uh, we're hoping to avoid layoffs at Metro Government, right. uh, so some of those admin and planning costs remain pretty well fixed, but the rest of those funding amounts will be adjusted proportionally, generally speaking. Uh, but there are certain percentage allocations, that, such as you're familiar with, such as a 15% CHOTO set aside with home funding. Uh, should that be reduced, uh, CHOTO funding would be reduced proportionately as well. And, and we're not, we're open to potentially having additional public comment. meetings and comment. You know, I don't think we're not married to just what the, the federal government and the HUD mandates. If timing allows, you know what I mean? I, I, we, we will absolutely do our best to reach out in a public fashion um, if, if any um, drastic or material changes um, occur as a result. Thank you for that question. How much um, local taxpayer money is involved in this? Uh, that is the purpose of this plan is to discuss the uh, funding allocations from HUD and planned uses for those funds. It doesn't talk about local matching requirements. Yeah, this has this this entire plan and this entire presentation is only focused on the, the HUD funds. Uh, if you take, if you look at the plan, you'll see there's some uh, auxiliary alternative funding sources identified that work on similar activities, uh, but the uses of those funds are not specified. I'll think in that case that the mayor's budget presentation would have limited impact on how you go forward. Uh, what the mayor's budget does do, and what Metro Council is required to do, is discuss uh, the spending decisions for these funds, as well as other funds. So it's included in these funds, although they're estimated, are included in the mayor's budget going forward for the upcoming fiscal year. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Right, well, we certainly uh, appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Again, um, just because we're we're finishing up this presentation tonight does not end your ability to take a look at this, to provide comments and feedback. So we welcome that. 
uh, via email or via real mail in writing. Um, and please feel free to contact uh, Curtis or I if you have any additional questions. We'll both be leaving our business cards up front as well. And uh, if uh, those of you who are attending, I hope all of you signed in, but if you didn't, uh, it's important you sign in until we have a public record of this meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming out on a beautiful evening. We really appreciate it.